Hello again, Youngstown. This is Jeremy Bachelor, superintendent of the Youngstown City School District. Welcome back to Belly Left Leadership, episode five. Remember, the Belly Left Leadership philosophy is something derived from athletics experiences, family dynamics, and over 20 years of school and district leadership experiences. It's a drive of stamina and constant reminder that a teamwork and coaching mentality is always present in order for us to be results driven, but yet we're people centered. The utilization of a simple game plan with precise preparation, execution, tenacity, and a teamwork mentality. So today's guest I'm really excited to have on with me today is Mr. Don Quayle Mims. Um, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about him, and then he can talk about himself um, as we go through. But Don Quayle is, was born and raised here in Youngstown. He's a graduate of Cheney High School of the Youngstown City School District, and he has been involved in nearly every program on the Youngstown State University campus. He's been with the Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion Office since the beginning as an undergraduate assistant. After completing his bachelor's degree in social work with a minor in developmental psychology, he accepted a position as a graduate assistant, then catapulted into his current role as the coordinator, transition, and mentoring programs. That's a long title, man. <laughs> where he focuses on leading, developing, and providing guidance and support to students. Uh, I've got to know Don Quayle over the last several years. Um, through, you know, his work at Youngstown State and obviously me being in the district. And then also, um, you know, all of my children are Youngstown State um, about to be graduates. The last one will graduate on May 5th. Um, and so Don Quell and my youngest son actually worked together in a couple of summer programs and um, just really impressed with him since the day I met him, um, how he's an encourager. Um, he's a hard worker and he's a Youngstown City School District product as well, doing great things and developing into um, a, a leader here in our city. So welcome, Don Quell. Thank you. Thank right. you. Really right. appreciate it. Yeah. Yes. So you hit it right on there. <laughs> All right. All right. So tell us about your experiences. Let's start with high school. So tell us about your experience as a Cheney High School scholar and how any of those moments um, shaped your journey as you transitioned into college. Um, so my experience in high school was, you know, typical as any um, underrepresented, marginalized student growing up in um, the inner city schools. Um, so it was it was actually great moments and there was also dull moments mm -hmm. because back then we didn't have sports teams um at least a home team okay so okay. i was i'm really a, a panther too okay uh, panther. yeah yeah so i played i played uh football ran a little track but again it, it really didn't feel like at home um okay okay but Oh, and then I was also under the VPA, Visual Performing Arts. Okay. All right. So it's a little different now, obviously. Yes. Right, right, right. Absolutely. <laughs> so as soon as I graduated, they brought the sports scene in and everything else. Okay. All right. <laughs> so okay. it was a yeah, it was a it was very it was very um great moments, but also challenging moments as well. Mm -hmm. So talk about that a little bit, you know, because you know, as we transitioned back and then most people know I, I actually came in to Youngstown as the principal at East High School. Um, right. but then they had already transitioned back to the Golden Bears, and I know there was some conversation about, you know, what happens to those folks that were in that right. that piece where they were the Panthers. Um, we tried to do as much as we could to preserve the legacy of that. But talk about as a student and as a scholar, you know, what you weren't able to play for the school you actually went to, but you were you did have opportunities. But what did that do? Because we've had conversations about our early college students, and and so how did yeah. that make you feel? So. Initially, it made me feel sad, just the fact that um, those opportunities were granted after I was mm -hmm. I was ultimately done. Mm -hmm. But again, I finished the sports scene and everything a little bit early because I want to put, you know, work before anything. Okay. Because money was a priority then. Okay. Um, but also, I realized that um, I didn't have a lot of support in high school. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, I had my home life and, you know friends and different things like that, but I didn't have that sense of support. Um, but I did run into a program while in high school called Upper Bound. Upper okay. Bound was, in, yeah. in a sense, my safe haven and gave me those opportunities. So Upper Bound, if you're not too familiar with it, it's for, um, I think, students who are in need um, of support, mm -hmm. of different resources. So they took you on trips, 
They took you outside of Ohio. They paid you to do your homework. Absolutely. Um, and after, and they were really on you to go to college, mm -hmm. at least fill out five applications. Absolutely. And even if you weren't interested in it. Yeah. So that was my safe haven all the way from ninth, all the way to 12th and lifelong. I'm still in contact. Yeah. So, so Upper Bound is a powerful program exactly. for those who don't know. Um, you know, and when I was in the district um, as a principal, we had a partnership, obviously, and our scholars were involved. And then personally, you know, my mother-in-law, actually, who we just lost a few months ago, actually wrote the first grant of a upper bound program that was actually run through a local school district down mm -hmm. in North Carolina. So most upper bound programs, either the community college or the college setting and then partnering with the, the district. Well, the program that she wrote and got funded and then ran for years actually ran out of the school district. Um, so definitely very familiar with the power of upper bound and, and what it has done for, you know, many people that I know um, as young professionals and young people trying to do the right thing. So yes, glad to hear that that was a positive part of your life as well. So. Yes, sir. So talk to me. You've transitioned from college. <clears throat> you've gone to college. college. Now you're a young professional. Right. Um, I'm, I promise I won't keep saying young, but, you know, you uh, <laughs> enjoy it while you can. Let me yes, say that to you. Yes. Um, how, how did that shape your understanding of leadership and what valuable lessons did you learn along the way from like high school to college to now? So a lot of people will say I was very mature while in high school. I okay. was also ranked, you know, most likely to become president. Okay. Uh, All right. So <laughs> All right. I laugh at it now, but I always just had a niche for growing. Okay. Because I always say there is no um, growth in comfortability. If you're comfortable where you're at, you're never going to grow. Um, so I try to be as uncomfortable as possible and grow in everything that I do. So that jump started me from being in these programs at Upper Bound. They pushed me, mm -hmm. continuously pushing me in uncomfortable positions. So coming to college, um, I was very nervous. I was very nervous to do anything, but I signed up for everything. Okay. Signed up for everything and made sure that my legacy was known in some facet. So being a part of everything and one particular memory I had was um, coming to college, um, ninth grade, I received the Jocelyn Kalewa Sente Scholarship. Correct? Okay. Okay. And I was invited to a scholarship dinner to honor her. Okay. So I pull up into the Dior and I walk in, mind you. At the time, I've never wore a suit before. Okay. Never okay. wore anything like that. So I pulled in and I walk in and I got this gold suit on. Mind you, business business attire I got is you. usually gray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? So uh -huh. I'm nervous. I'm sweating bullets. I'm like, oh, snap. <laughs> I picked out the wrong suit. <laughs> so I got this gold suit on and I, I'm about to turn around. I'm about to walk out because I'm like, this ain't working because right. I'm nervous. Walk, and then I'm like, you know what? Growth and comfortability, you know, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta be uncomfortable as possible. So then I walk up, first person I see is Jim Trussell. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I, I start networking, I start talking, so I became comfortable where I was. And then I start talking amongst the crowd. Then we went into the ballroom section and they said, all scholarship recipients stand up. Mm -hmm. I was the only one to stand up. I was the only one to stand up. Mind you, this scholarship that I filled out in high school, that upper bound pushed me to fill out. Mm -hmm. All they asked for was demographics. What school you went to? Yeah, volunteer work. No scholarship. No uh, no essay. No essay. No, no none of that. And even to this day, they've been continually paying paying for my school, all of that good stuff. And I've built a connection. So going to that scholarship dinner, I was able to meet the actual person who gave me the scholarship. Yeah, yeah. And we bet you made a connection. So she knows who I am, and she supports me, um, continuing my educational endeavors. Man, that's powerful. I mean. For you personally, right. but also, I mean, you're dropping a lot of jewels for our, our current scholars, you know, and, you know, and some growth and that talking about being uncomfortable. You know, we hear a lot of times, you know, I've been a high school principal for a long time. You know, I don't like to do that, Mr. Bachelor. I don't want to do. I mean, sometimes we have to do things that we Definitely. don't want to do to get where we want to be. Yeah. And, you know, hearing that from you, hopefully uh, my young scholars listening, that you understand that we all we all been there. And, you know, you got someone here and, you know, even myself, I come from the city of Youngstown as well. We've had to put ourselves in situations to grow. Right. We have to grow. And if not, we're going to stay where we are. And that's not what we want. 
So, so talk to me about your current role right now that you have at Youngstown State. So my current role as the coordinator for mentoring and transitioning programs. Yes, that's a long name. <laughs> um, I do a lot with the students. Um, my main thing is providing resources for the students and making sure all the students in our programs mm -hmm. um, succeed at all costs. Okay. 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 So our first program, well, let's start with yes, right? Right. Because that's when you come to uh, college as an incoming student. So our yes program is a two week program, and you stay in, you stay on campus. Um, you you gain a sense of belonging, gain an under a sense of understanding of who you are right. and what you want to become in Youngstown State University in the college atmosphere. Um, you come in with a cohort. By the first week, I guarantee you're like family. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I was a product originally it was called Summer Bridge. I right. was a product of that. Um, then I became a counselor. And then now I'm over the program. Right, right, <laughs> right, right. So this YES program this year it will be from Sunday, July 21st, which will be July Sunday, July 21st to Tuesday, July 23rd, um, which will be two days virtual. Yes, a lot of people say, why, you know, the two days virtual. Right. But you got to know who you're staying with, right? Absolutely. <laughs> you got to know who you're staying with. So those two days, you get the understanding of who you'll be staying with, a brief introduction of mm -hmm. your professors and different things like that. And then we'll we'll kickstart Sunday, July twenty eighth through Monday, August twelfth. Okay. 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 So two weeks, you stay on campus, you gain a sense of belonging. Like I said before, you'll also get a, a sneak peek into college classes, yep. so you'll know exactly what it, it feels like. Mm -hmm. But there won't be for a grade. It will just be more of a, an experience, like no other. So what I'm hearing is you're really giving our you know our young people an opportunity to to get their feet wet. Right get some support around right them, and then be prepared to really jumpstart in the fall right their academic success their social emotional success the whole nine yards um that is something that is needed and mm -hmm. so what i also love is the fact that you're meeting our scholars where they are you're meeting them where they are because you know it is scary having to go stay on campus sometime if you've never done that before maybe pairing up with a roommate that you've never met <clears throat> you know i've been through it i think you've been through it and to give them the opportunity to know each other, you know, while it may not be the same bridge program that I went through 20, 30 years ago, or the same bridge program that you went through is meeting them where they are and getting them prepared for their success. So I always say, quit meeting. Let's stop preparing to teach uh, students for our past, but for their future. And a lot of, and a lot of students say, Oh, why is it two weeks now? Like past bridge people, why is it two weeks now? The week was fine. But at the end of the day, we've done assessments. We strategically plan. And also I'm a product of the program. I always beg, I'm like, why wasn't the program longer? Right. You right. See what I'm saying? Why wasn't it longer? Like that first week, I just felt like I wanted more. Mm -hmm. Now we're mm -hmm. giving you more and we're giving you all of the things that you need. And lastly, we're take we're to also take the students on a day trip. Okay. So those that haven't been outside of Ohio mm -hmm. or Washington or whatever the case may be, we take you on a day trip and you get an experience like no other, as well as seeing Youngstown as a whole and not for what you see on the news. So tell me, so ultimately I hear you, but what, what is, who are you working with? Where are these students coming from? What do they have to do to be eligible to be in the program? Okay. And that kind of thing. So actually I'm <clears> working <throat> with um, me and my uh, co, me and my coworker, Ms. Susan Moore. Mm -hmm. She's the assistant director for multi multicultural outreach services. Mm -hmm. um, we're working and we're recruiting students. Um, so this is from all, all over Ohio, mm -hmm. all over, all over Youngstown. So you guys students from Florida. Um, Texas, mm -hmm. all over. And, but first I wanted to, those Florida, Texas, obviously those will be sent through, um, what is it? Through mail. Mm -hmm. Those will be sent through mail. So you'll get um, a mailing letter saying, welcome to the program, all mm -hmm. that good mm -hmm. stuff. But I'm personally coming to the Youngstown City Schools mm -hmm. and recruiting students because again, we need to start at home. Mm -hmm. Need to start at home. And obviously, I want to give them this good news because they also have this scholarship opportunity called the Y-Star Scholarship. Oh, that's where I was going okay. next. <laughs> so they have this next. scholarship opportunity <clears throat> called the Y-Star Scholarship. So originally, when I was in school in 2018, they all of us got excited over a scholarship opportunity that they, they came into our classrooms just as I have came to Cheney and um, ran early college. And they told about this scholarship opportunity. 
We were all excited, but they said it was six thousand mm-hmm. dollars. But when we got to college at Youngstown State University, we found out the tuition was ten thousand mm-hmm. dollars. Mm-hmm. So the problem with that is they only stayed a semester or two, and then they dropped out. So out of my graduating class of one hundred and thirty four students, mm-hmm. only three graduated. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. So <clears throat> now. I'm excited to announce that those students who are from Young's, who graduate from Youngstown City School District, Mm -hmm. which is Renerly College, East and Cheney, will be getting a full ride scholarship. Yes. Full ride scholarship, which is also last dollar. Yep. They always want us to imply the last dollar. Absolutely. Because you have to apply for um, the YSU Foundation scholarship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. But anyway, after that, and after all the tuition and fees is uh, taken out, you get this full ride scholarship, and housing is paid for. Mm-hmm. Books, you get a thousand dollars for books, a thousand dollars for a laptop of your choosing. You can't yeah. beat that. No, you cannot beat it. So we're going from limited to unlimited. Yes, you can go to another school. Mm-hmm. You can go to Akron. You mm-hmm. can go to Kent. You can go to all these other schools. You can get experience of a lifetime at an HBCU, mm-hmm. right? But at the end of the day, when you look down the line, you got debt. Yeah. You want to be debt free and have a good time? <laughs> <laughs> or do you want to be in debt <clears throat> and have a good time? Absolutely. So let, let me let me just kind of add on. And I mean, you hit it all, but I mean, this part of the reason why I really wanted you on here right. is so we could really First of all, talk about and celebrate your leadership and your role and support you providing um, young people. But we do have this great partnership here in Youngstown. The Youngstown Foundation is a great partner, and they have reinvented this Y Star program, which we have celebrated. We've done press releases. I need our community to understand the significance of this opportunity for all of our kids in Youngstown. Um, you graduate from Youngstown City Schools, you meet the basic requirements of getting accepted in the Youngstown State University, establishing that plan, completing the FAFSA, and we have all those supports within this district and at the university to help you with all of that. And then you can go to Youngstown State University for free free. and get a high-quality education. My graduate degrees are from Youngstown State. All of my kids are going to be Youngstown State graduates. Um, We have a high-quality institution right here in our community that our Youngstown scholars have a fast track to in order to be successful. And then on top of that, we want to make sure you graduate. I won't just get you there, but we need to make sure you graduate. And we've got people like Don Quell and his cohorts that are supporting you. So I'm encouraging our families to push your children towards this. And then my young people get there, get involved and get with Don Quell and others. And if you start feeling like you're not going to be successful, there are people that to help you run through those challenges. Go ahead. And then lastly, um, again, they say in high school, we hold your hand in high school, right? Mm-hmm. But in college, they say, we don't hold your hand. But the difference between that, what they told you, and what I'm telling you is, right, right. within our program, the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, we, and starting in this program of yes, coming to, first applying to YSU, obtaining this full ride scholarship, and then applying to yes, you are ultimately assisting yourself with us holding your hand until you're ready to let go. Absolutely. Okay. You know, you know, like a bird, you know, <laughs> when you got, you got the mother egg, I'm going to hold you until you're ready to go. Again, right. you can come back any, any time for a hot meal. Right. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, we're here for you. We're here to see you succeed. We're here to see you grow. We want you to get a four-year degree and even go on and get a master's degree, possibly yeah. a doctorate. Absolutely. Okay. Listen, I'm excited. And um, and I just know, and I just, again, I want to plead with our, our parents and grandparents and aunties and uncles and everybody. We've got to push our young people towards this. And then you see and you hear that there are people there at the university who will, will be that village to continue to support them. And then young people, um, you heard Don Quill score. You heard the challenges and the successes that he's had. Um, there's people here that will support you and push you towards those goals. A um, couple more things and then we'll wrap up. Um, also, if you need questions answered or you need to get in touch with Mr. Mims, you can reach my office. You can call our office and I will make sure that you get in touch with Don Quayle. That's how serious we are. We want to increase the utilization of this Y-Star and the success in those individuals who are graduating 
in four to five years afterwards. So I'm, I'm, I'm issuing a challenge to my district, I'm issuing a challenge to our community that let's 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 utilize this to enhance sure. our community. All right. So we also I just want to give a, a couple of, you know, a few minutes and we, you know, we lost a, a friend a couple of years or ago. Good. Um, Dr. Carol um, Bennett. And so I don't know if you wanted to say a few things about her and the impact she's had on you and also so, many others. Yeah. So I was here since she, since she began in the office, I was an undergraduate assistant. So I seen her when she came in, mm -hmm. and the impact she made right away. Yeah. Um, she saw the need and she is one of the key reasons why we have this Y star scholarship mm -hmm. um, full ride because she saw students like me who initially didn't need the Y star money, right, right. but saw that we had money left over mm -hmm. and we couldn't utilize it for our um, future endeavors, like a master's degree. Right. 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 So I was one of the students that complained like, Hey, I had this money. I didn't use it. Can I use it for a master's degree? Right, right, right. They said I wasn't eligible for it Okay. because it was just for four years. Yeah. So she saw that need and she was just like, but the difference between you and other students is other students need this opportunity. And I also explain the story of how a lot of the students are, couldn't take full advantage of their opportunity, opportunities at Youngstown State University because they didn't have enough of the resources. Right, right. She saw that need. She also was very patient. She was a woman of uh, not so many words. She was say, she know just the, the right, right words to say, to say. Yeah. in three sentences. Yep. Don Quill was wrong. Nothing's wrong, what are you talking about? Don Quill was wrong. Oh, okay. And then you'll say you'll say what's wrong. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. But again, she is. She will be forever missed. Mm -hmm. Her work will continue to go on, and we will continue to do her proud. Love it. Love it. All right. So, you know, obviously, you you're, you're growing in your leadership. You're doing great things. So, what advice would you give young scholars who are aspiring to be leaders in their community? Um, what, what advice would you give? Don't forget where you came from. That's the most impactful thing that I can give to anybody. Do not forget where you came from. Because when you, you leave Youngstown and you think there are other opportunities, okay. But don't forget where you started. Don't forget the people who, who uh, uplifted you and helped you along the way. A lot of people say, oh, nobody helped me along the way. I had my own start. It's not true. No. Even a begging man, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> need help along the way. Everybody needs help, okay? So I needed help. And again, put another person on. That's it. Okay. Don't be selfish. Be selfless. We were, before we were we started recording, you asked me about, you know, a quote that I that I use that I'm proud to say that, you know, my son was actually listening for some time during his childhood. <laughs> um, you know, we talk about to whom much is given, much is required. Um, and you that's basically it. I mean, we we talked a little bit offset about how we we feel like we have to honor. You got to honor, continue to honor Carol. I've got to honor those who've come before me. I've got to honor and then reach back and help those who need my help because somebody helped me along the way. And so I'm just, that's kind of like a lifestyle for me. And, and it sounds like it is for you as well. Right. So um, that's why I'm, I'm proud to, to call you a, a friend now and somebody that I can continue to work with in our community yes, for the betterment of our scholars. Um, so are there any last parting words you want to say to the community? Just sign up for the, the YES program. Again, spots are limited. And again, I cannot wait to see you shine here at Youngstown State University. I love it. So as we wrap up episode five, um, please, I mean, as you see, um, dynamic young leader in our community that uh, I'm proud to know and hopefully continue to work with um, closely as he grows and we grow here in the city of Youngstown, the Youngstown City School District, Youngstown State University, the city of Youngstown, we are all one. Um, so remember, belly left leadership. We have to have the game plan, we have the plan, we prepare, we run it to precision, everybody knowing their job and their execution and their role, and we run it until they stop it. Podcast is the property of Showfield Broadcasting and Youngstown City Schools. Showfield Audio and Video Broadcasting Studios recorded and produced this episode.